My name is Jerry Gibbons. I'm client number 1176. My sobriety date is uh, 7 19 of 2018. Grew up out in the country um, all my life. Had a normal childhood, uh, good parents. Um, didn't attend church, you know, hardly at all. Um, never really got in trouble in school. Um, popular, played sports, you know, and uh, about probably my uh, senior year, you know, junior, senior year, you know, drank alcohol just like anybody else and uh, and smoked a little pot, not much. I really didn't care for it, made me paranoid. But, uh, um, you know, nothing stands out in my life, you know, as a child that I can, you know, blame anything on or, or, or anything other than uh, wish I went to the church a little more. But I uh, uh, got married when I was uh, 20 years old. We, we had a good marriage, had a son, and everything was good until uh, my dad come down with cancer when I was about 32 years old. And uh, uh, he uh, struggled for four years really hard. And during that time, I'd had a back surgery a couple of times and was prescribed war tabs. And uh, I got to where I was abusing the war tabs and uh, to deal with my dad's, you know, struggles in his life. You know? And I was there pretty much every day for him. Uh, can't imagine a, a worse death, really, with my dad. And the abuse got worse and worse. And during that time, I lost my oldest brother, which he was about, I'd say, 14 years older than me. So, you know, during my childhood on the weekends, I'd spend all weekend with him. So he was kind of like my dad on the weekends, and I was really close to him. And he had a son, and so when he passed away, his son, you know, moved in with my wife and I. I try not to get emotional, but it, it always gets me. And uh, my dad passed away, and by that time I was pretty hard in addiction with opiates, really hard. Um, doing as much as, as what they would give somebody dying with, with cancer. And, uh, during this time, uh, my wife and I, my, my life just kind of started falling apart a little bit. And towards the end of it, probably the last year with the opiates, I, I did a little bit of meth with it. And somebody told me, you know, if you do a little bit of this, it's cheap. And uh, you don't have to do as many of, the, of, of these pills that are expensive. So the last year of my addiction on the opiates was, I mean, a nightmare. And that's when everybody noticed, you know, something was wrong with me, that I had a serious problem. And I knew I did. I'd held the same job for, since I was 20 years old. And uh, I called in and, you know, told them that I had a problem and I need to take some time off. And at that time, uh, I, I went through withdrawals really bad and and, and ended up uh, in a, a nut house, I guess is what you call it, for about nine days. And I realized, you know, during that time that, that, that I never wanted to touch opiates or pills or anything like that again. And, and uh, after that, I went to rehab in Tallahassee, Oklahoma. I'm Choctaw, so I went to a Choctaw facility, and I, I only was there probably 19 days, and, and left there and come home, and 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 I've never touched an opiate or a drug again in my life, but I traded it for alcohol. And during this time, I lost uh, my mom, both sets of my grandparents, and another one of my brothers, and. I just, I just, I acted like, to me, I, I never give them up. They were always there. I was gonna see them tomorrow. So I self-medicated to deal with the loss. I, I didn't know any other way to, 
to deal with it. And during my addiction with alcohol was worse, was what it did to my life as far as physically, medically, mentally, um, everybody around sin, it, it was worse. You know, you think of alcohol as uh, no big deal. And it was a big deal in my life. And uh, my marriage went downhill like a freight train. And, and even my relationship with my son, it went downhill. And I would stay out partying at nighttime until two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And hundreds of times I, I didn't end up back home. I'd wake up the next morning not knowing how I got home. I would drink talk, black out. And uh, I'd go out and look at the vehicle that I drove there to make sure it was it was there, wonder how I got home, and uh, walk around it to see if it had any damage. Uh, that's a bad feeling whenever uh, you don't remember two or three hours of your life. And I did that quite often. And during all this time, you know, most people thought, you know, Jerry is a happy guy, got it going on. Man, I lived in misery, fear. Uh, I hated myself. I mean, I truly hated myself. I just couldn't quit. And that this went on for probably about four or five years. And uh, I'd, I'd come home beat up, I'd, you know, get in fights and, and, you know, beat to a pulp. But I, I would just go out and do it again. I, I, I think I had so much anger in me. Uh, I, I wanted, I wanted to hurt. I wanted to hurt somebody or somebody to hurt me. And during all this time, uh, just all the little lies that you know, you know, I had morals, and I knew how I was supposed to be as a man or how I wanted to be as a man. So all those things that. You know, I done uh, weighed on me, heavy. I can remember, you know, driving in my driveway, sometimes by myself, and uh, just holler at myself, you know, cuss myself. Why, why can't you quit? And uh, I, I just couldn't do it. And I, I, so after all these you know, I knew my marriage was to an end and, and my life was at the end and, and I, I really was lucky to be alive still. But I pushed the, pushed the limits um, every other day. And so I, I reached out. I was, by that time I was drinking vodka and uh, I'd wake up at five o'clock in the morning, just withdrawn, uh, get up, find my bottle, where I had it hidden somewhere in the house and take a couple of big swigs just to go lay back down and sleep for an hour. And during this time, you know, my wife knew that I was drinking. She thought I was drinking more in the evening time and then I'd get drunk at night. She didn't realize I was drinking pretty much. If I was awake, I was drinking. And uh, I would just drink during the day just to knock off the shakes and the, and the edge. And then once about four or five o'clock came, you know, I would I would hit I would hit the bottle hard, and uh, pretty much five or six nights out of seven, I would. I, I, by the time I went to sleep, I'd be drunk. And my wife, uh, she just pretty much numbed herself, just distance. And at that time, we'd been at this time we'd probably been together about twenty six years, and. I could see uh, the pain that I caused my family. And uh, I, I was tired of hurting them. I just, I just couldn't quit. I mean, that hurt me about as bad as anything. I, I planned on uh, committing suicide. I just was tired. I was tired of hurting. And I was tired of hurting my family. And I think it was on a Wednesday, 
I went down to where I usually uh, would drink at and uh, had gotten into it, got in a little bit of trouble and uh, my wife found out about it, my boss found out about it and uh, so my boss called me and said, Jerry, I'm coming and getting you. And uh, he came and got me from down, down on the river and, and uh, took me to a buddy of mine's house, which he's a preacher. And I stayed there the night. The next morning, I had a meeting I had to go to at my work. And, uh, and I knew my wife was gonna be there. And uh, I wasn't sure what was gonna happen, but I had no other choice, you know. And so uh, I went. And uh, when I walked in, my boss, Seth Wadley, was sitting in there, Kemp Bowles and my wife. And they pretty much had a plan that I was going to a place called Rob's Ranch. And uh, we sit down and we talked about it. I agreed, but I just thought, man, I've been to rehab twice. You know, I'm broke. You know, I thought, well, what are they thinking? You know, I've tried it and it doesn't, it hasn't worked. And, and I, I pretty much knew my only out. So I agreed to go. I stayed sober that weekend. This was on a Friday. I stayed sober all weekend. Checked into the ranch here that Monday morning. I can remember I uh, driving up this driveway out here. I love music. My dad loved music. And I like old music. And uh <laughs> I listened to this song today when I drove in this driveway. But uh, it was Why Me Lord. Why me Lord. And uh, I pulled up in front of the office with my wife with me and she was done. She you know she was gonna support me. You know to get through this to see if you know and give me a shot arm to take back off, but we were done. My son, he would, you know, he wouldn't really even talk to me. We, we were, our relationship was toxic. And so I finished listening to that song out in the parking lot until it went off, went inside, and, uh, and met the guys here. Sam, Sam checked me in, and, and uh, everybody was just, just felt at home. And uh, I seen, uh, you know, my wife, she didn't cry. She never cried. She numbed herself. That day she cried. And after being with somebody for 27 years, uh, you pretty much know them. And I seen that she was done. It was, you know. She was she wasn't gonna hurt no more and, and I believed that there's no way I could keep from hurting her anymore. So I, I felt like when she pulled out of that driveway that day I was on my own. I stayed the night and I get up the next morning and they have chapel in the morning. So I, I knew I was searching for God. You know, I've never never had a relationship with God in my life. But I was just searching for anything I'd never found before or any suggestions anybody would give me. And the first song that day that Pastor Steve sang was Why Me Lord. I can remember sitting in that pew and I had goosebumps on my arms. And I looked up to myself and I thought, man, that's either my dad or God talking to me. 
And, and from then on, each day just got a little bit better and a little better. I did everything they asked me to here. Um, just everybody said you need to surrender. I wanted to surrender that day and was thinking, what if, what is wrong with me? Why why can't you know I feel what's going on? Uh, I just something about this place is is like a brotherhood or uh, a peace that that I've never felt in my life before. And as the days went on, it was probably about my th between 35, 40 days here. Uh, I know what surrender is. I surrendered. My counselor, Dennis Madden, a uh, great man. Um, he worked with me and my wife. And about this time, 45, 50 days in, you know, my son started coming out and seeing me. Uh, he'd come to church with me some, where we go to church at. And my relationship with my wife just continued to, to get better. I, I didn't, I never thought anybody could change like a 180. But I did, I mean, and I kept thinking, is it gonna stick, is this real, is it fake? And, but the feeling I had inside of me, and it, it was Jesus Christ. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. They say, uh, do the next right thing. Man, I, I've done the next right thing. I even think about things before I do them to make sure that I'm doing the next right thing because I don't want to lose this feeling that I have inside or, or the respect that I've gained back for the ones I love. So my wife and I made amends. My wife forgave me for, for everything that I've done. And so I transitioned out of Rob's Ranch in October of 2018. I had a guy reach out to me um, wanting to open up a silver living house in Norman. And he had heard that, you know, that I knew a lot of guys out here and that that if, if he hired me, that I maybe could fill his house up. And that kind of excited me. I, so, I, you know, I talked about it and thought about it. And my wife said, Jerry, why, why would you do that when you could do it for yourself? <laughs> And, you know, we, we didn't have no money saved. I had a, a sum in a 401, 401k account. And uh, I just started praying about it. And my preacher, when he preached on Sundays, it's, and he and I had a, have an awesome relationship. I'd come out here on Monday nights to the ranch with him, put on a meeting. And, and it, when he was in church, it was like he was talking right to me, you know, telling us all we need to step out of our comfort zone. We need to you know, be children of God, be leaders, you know. And I, I decided that, that I was gonna open up a Christian-based sober living house in Purcell. So I took off and I started looking. I made sure that the guys would have jobs. Made, I laid all my bases down and, and talked to all my, my mentors. Uh, to make sure that they thought it was a good idea, just not being out of my sobriety that long, opening up a sober living house. And it, not one of them had one negative thing to say about it. And uh, so May the 21st, I opened up this year a Christian-based sober living house here in Purcell, Oklahoma. Um, I, this Friday, I will have 10 guys in my house. They're all Rob's Ranch guys. And uh, we work our program together. Um, I, I, I never imagined being this happy, feeling this full inside of my life. It's been 15 months 
since I've been sober, uh, I've not missed one day at church in 15 months. I've not missed a Monday night here at the ranch in 15 months. Um, I've found my purpose in life. My, my marriage, you can ask my wife, uh, she said it's better than it's been in 29 years, and we've been together 29 years. My relationship with my son, uh, every other day he comes up to me and hugs me, tells me how much he loves me, and how proud he is of me. He's now going to church. Uh, I just uh, continue to do the next right thing. Live in God's will. Every morning when I get up, before my feet hit the floor, I pray to God that uh, He just uses me as His tool for the day. Just, just, just today to serve him in whatever way it is. And uh, if I don't have time in a, to tell you what all I do in a day's time, I don't know how I get what all I do in a day's time done. It's, it's God thing, but my life is great. Um, I'm living for God. I have my family back and uh, helping change lives. And uh, I just, I love this place. It's changed my life, changed my family's life, and given me my life back, given my wife or husband back, given my son his dad back. And uh, I come out here and I see it every time I come out here. I, come, I still continue to come out here three, four times a week. And to come in, and see the men come in broken, it humbles me. It reminds me where I was. It reminds me I could be back there. You know, I'm not, I've always been at it. And when you leave here, you get the tools to stay sober and it's up to you to use them. But the reward is getting to know some of these guys and to watch them, you know, two, three, four, five weeks, put on weight, come back alive. Um, um, grow, see the light go off. I can't imagine anything in the world that I would be happier doing racing cars or whatever I honestly can say. I can't imagine being any happier doing anything than this right here. Seeing, and it's free. I get to come out here for free. And uh, it just don't seem right. It seems like I ought to be having to pay for this, but I'm, I'm blessed and I'm full of love. My name is Jerry Gibbons. I'm client number 1176, Expect a Miracle at Rob's Ranch.